Now you are listening to WBCN here in Boston. Tracy Roach with you along with Elvis Costello, Nick Lowe, and Oedipus uh, this afternoon on the radio. Of course, Oedipus, not Oedipus, you're not going to be there tonight. Um, Nick yeah, and no, Elvis <laughs> are going to be at the Orpheum tonight doing a show along with Mink DeVille and uh, Dave Edmonds, who will be playing with uh, Nick's band. And Nick, that's something I do want to talk to you about. Um, Nick Lowe's been around for years and years and years and years doing music and stuff. As many of you know, he was a he was a part of he's been a part of Dave Edmonds's band and uh, uh, gosh, Brinsley Schwartz produced a lot of those albums, played on those, wrote songs for them. Graham Parker, you have produced Elvis's two albums, and now you've done one all of your own. And I guess I just want to ask you a little bit how it's been to suddenly be out doing that. And suddenly, Nick Lowe's out in front, and for years you weren't. Has it been a, a new experience? Is it? Why did you do it? All of that junk, just. How's that for a, a succinct, small, short question? <laughs> um, ha why did I do it? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, it's, um, it's what I do for a living, basically. I, uh, that's, I don't really understand your question, actually. Well, uh, basically, just being in the background for so many years in a lot oh, of yeah. ways. I mean, Nick always seemed like you'd spend most of your time making other people's records sound good. Oh, the production. See, yeah. Now you're doing your own. I mean, now it's Nick who's going to be out on stage tonight performing up front, leading the band, rather than being one of the members and a back working part of it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I do, And just yeah. why, why and how does that feel doing well, that? Well, I, I wasn't in the background on purpose, you know, before. It wasn't, you know, consciously trying to be yeah. in the background. Um, but it's just that uh, prior to the last uh, six months... So for all this time, and do you feel like it's something new and something fresh, and that you've broken through to it, you know, a new dimension in rock and roll at all, or is this just... Uh, well, I, I don't... Why well, didn't you lose your sense of humor, you know, that kind of thing? Oh, it's very hard not to, you know, to lose your sense, sense of humor. You've got to have a sense of humor about it nowadays, otherwise you turn out, you'll start sounding like Journey or something like that. Or, no, or, don't say that. No, that's cruel. Oh, all right, then Jefferson Starship. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you about Boston, too, Elvis. I, I read your comments in Newsweek about Boston, and since you were in Boston, I figured you could... They're probably listening, and, uh... <laughs> Every word I say is true. Elvis, someone mm -hmm. called in and, and wanted to know, uh, the last time you were here, you played the University of Massachusetts Amherst, and... Don't remind me. They wanted to know why you, uh, broke all your guitars and walked off stage, uh... I didn't break any guitars. We, we did some damage to some gear. Basically because we're a professional band, and we... Our contract says that we have to play a set of uh, an accepted length to a professional standard, and in return, the promoter is supposed to provide a professional sound system and professional lights which they didn't and it's very annoying when uh, it's bad enough when you play in a, a place where there's a lot of apathy and and the audience is uh, doesn't seem to understand what you're doing or doesn't want to know but when you've got an audience which is enthusiastic and you're prevented physically or, as you might say from actually doing a good show because you're limited by the gear that was uh, provided in terms of the contract then it can get very frustrating, and that night we just we just cracked, and uh, and that was the reason that the show finished as it did. What about shows in general? Also, we nearly got arrested later on by, uh, <laughs> by the Massachusetts police the next morning, when the uh, when the very courteous people at Amherst University decided that we hadn't paid the bill and called the police. Well, there's a, there's in fact, also every time we come to Massachusetts, I was just we, seem say, to, we seem really? to get in trouble. The paradise, <laughs> I, the rat, I, yeah. you know, all of it. You have been invited uh, back to the rat. Well, it wasn't, you know, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, I can hardly wait. In fact, we've got a copy of that article. You were written up.